<laughs> Be quiet. Hey, Prophet Dewan, are you really on here? The famous Prophet Dewan. God bless you. We're gonna get everything else together. We're gonna wait for our family to come on. Me, Familia, Kiosha. She traveling and all her thing. Hello, Cynthia Baisden. Tarina, hello. Jermaine, Shannon Driscoll. I saw you put a shout out. Bible study in our, ch our church was canceled, so get on Facebook Live tonight. Thank you for the shout out. Hello, Tarina. You becoming one of my babies. Crystal Adgers, welcome. Hey now, Jermaine. Andrea Allen, God bless you. Welcome. Going to give people a few more minutes to get on. Mike Rose at work checking in. We missed you tonight in our business meeting. Glad to see you on. Intercessor Joy Nolan, nice to see you on and live in my studio audience tonight. Destiny Adger, she said good evening everyone. Come on, y'all should be saying good evening back to her. Christopher Blake, Minister Cynthia Baisden. Priscilla Harris, welcome. Emphatic about Jesus, welcome. I like that name. We have someone on here by the name Cash with a K. I like that as well. And Nicole Coleman, welcome. Lovey, welcome. Minister Leah, welcome. Also in my studio audience tonight. Frederica Hunter, welcome. How's my lovey doing? You doing all right, Mr. Clemens? Apostle Thelma, welcome. Welcome. How's everyone doing? How's your day been? Are you detoxing? Priscilla Harris, hello. Woo, I'm rushing. Make sure my, my wig is on tight here. We're going to work it out if it's not right. No, it's not really a wig. Let me give you all no less reason to be inboxing me. Minister Yvette, hello, my dear. Welcome, Kelly McBride. Janita, hello. Belinda Perry, good evening. I'm glad you're on as well. Cassandra Walker, welcome. Welcome. Let me give a shout out to these beautiful people. Mm-hmm. Ready to get off work. I hear you. You be careful on the road, Apostle Thelma. Traveling woman. I just got out of one meeting literally about 10 minutes ago. Um, so I'm stuck here at my office. So I get to have a good time with y'all. Welcome, Reverend Craig. I get to have a good time with y'all instead of um, going home because my my business meeting here at my office lasted until about 10 minutes ago. I listened to the first night in the story about the frog. Yes, that's right. Thank you for bringing that back up. Greetings from South Carolina. Is it um, Wanderlin? Tell me if I'm saying it right. Is it like Wanderlin? I like that name. From South Carolina, any other states represented besides Connecticut? Welcome. I just want you to know that you are in the right place at the right time. Welcome, Sharita. Perfect. All right. Wandelin. Very good. I spent many years working in the medical profession, so I began to learn how to pronounce names, and I learned zip codes for each city all around my state, so that's a gift that I kept when I transitioned over from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of our God. And is that Jertrice, North Carolina? Welcome, North Carolina. I'd like to visit North Carolina. Sister Gilda, thank you, Lavanda. Facebook is buffering, and I'm going in and out, I'm hearing. And that's probably because I'm on this phone right here. Frederica from Massachusetts, thank you. And that's where I had Periscope on last night, so maybe that's what the whole problem is. What y'all think? It's five after now, so we're probably going to go ahead and get started. We're detoxing for 30 days. <clears throat> and um, it's so necessary. I actually want to start a detox of my physical body. I don't know if I want to do it parallel to this or after this. Welcome, Maria. <clears throat> Welcome, 
<clears throat> Pastor Lydia, do you teach on transitioning from the kingdom of the world to the kingdom of God? Yes, I do. And that's a major struggle, even from religion to the kingdom of God, Minister Yvette. You couldn't comment on Periscope? All right, I just didn't want all those trolls talking to us tonight. Because, you know, let me see how I can change it. Can I change it while we're up? I don't know if I can change it when we're up. And I don't know if I want to log out. Can I change it? Does anybody know that I can make it that people can talk without? Can, maybe if you try Start sketching, share broadcast, ask for share. I just, um, let's see, we're getting there. I'm glad you're back. I know, Sister Sharita, I figured a few of them was going to be tuned in tonight. Because we're all running out of our, we're all running out of our business meeting here. All right, I think we're building up enough to go forward, but I can't figure out how to give you our room to comment. Maybe I have to log out and log back in, so stay with me. I'm going to do that, but y'all got to be ready for the trolls then because you know they're going to come up on there with their little cells and their crazy minds. I'm going to log out, and I'll change it so that everybody can comment, even those that I do not follow, and um, I'll log back in. How do I do it? My setup. Share, help. Everybody know how I do it? I Michelle that. Wallen. It's one button. I remember in the beginning, but they changed it. So that everybody can comment on Periscope. Oh, yeah. It's uh, oh, comment. Right. Settings, sync, enable video, auto delete, auto save to camera roll, share in high definition. I want to moderate, moderate my broadcast. What does that mean? Come on, y'all got to help me find this. These people want it. Susie, my Susie, that's Mama Susie. Paso, uh, Ursula Wright's mom. Sister Gilda, how are you? We one of my favorite last names, Kusada. I want to moderate the. Do you have your own? Hmm. That's what it is. It's the moderate thing. No, mine are both on. Comment abuse. Mm-mm. Come on, cause we gotta get started. I don't wanna be on here, keeping folks overnight. I like to keep some a word. Oh, I think, is that it there, that little button? Everybody can chat. There we go. Okay. It was right on the front screen. Soul Detox, day three. What was the name of it again? Boy, y'all supposed to be my live studio audience. Y'all too excited. Yeah. Wait, but what did you say? Three, De day three? Yep. Deception, infection. And this is the end of this topic. All right, my Facebook Live people. Thank you. You were in my administrative office tonight. We got it. And thank you for all those that were notifying me. How is Facebook Live showing? Are you showing all right? Edward Estelle. Yes, sir. Beverly Ann. All right. Three, two, one. I'm back. Make sure we get rid of the trolls. Minister Kareem, Cherie Green, very good. Good, looking much better now. Yes, lovey, thank you. Just make sure y'all block them trolls for me. And I ain't going to have time to read anyway, because the Lord is good. <laughs> All right, we're popping back up. We're going up. All right, this is what I'll start up doing now. It's about 10 after 9. So we can keep going. Hi, Elaine Stringer, and welcome. I'm a moderator, so I'll help you out with that. All right, lovey. I knew there was a reason why we connected. Good, good, good. I just want to give a few um, comments to people who have written in. <clears throat> Hello, Ebony, Danielle, Pastor Paulette Jameson, 
Um, someone had inboxed me today and said, much of what you expounded on last night are facts. I have shared with others as God revealed them in my own life. You really honed in on some truth that has been evident in this culture, but yet not taught. We have to get real deliverance and not just running and shouting. We have to get people from where they are to where God created them to be. That's deliverance, exposing lies and calling a thing a thing. I hope one day that we can talk more about this and maybe face to face. And I love the definition that you've given on pastors. Just some good feedback to hear what's going on. Thank you so much for the uh, deception infection teaching. I put in practice today, keeping my mouth shut and not being so quick to reply. And I noticed my mood was a lot more joyful. I realized I can be somewhere. I, I realized I can be somewhat a stickler for order at work and can come across a little mean. So I wanted to nip that in the bud. I am excited to become the change I need to be and break the unhealthy patterns in my soul. God bless you for this teaching. Thank you. Um, I question all the time, where do these thoughts come from? I need the help of the Lord to get me through this. I pray that I find that missing peace during these 30 days. Please pray for me. Thank you and God bless you. Another person has written, the message is powerful. We need this shut-in for all of our leaders in this region. Another person has written in, I want you to know that I am a detox delegate and I have signed my spiritual contract for the next 30 days. What you don't know will hurt you. I'm living on that now. I am already blessed and wanted to let you know personally. I agree that the meteor has gone to a very dark place, but thank you for spiritual change agents as yourself to pioneer and pierce through with the breaker anointing to shine God's true will and way to a people that usually would not even be reached. I want to thank you for your obedience. Come on, let's give them a hand clap with the hearts. Good evening, Apostle. I know the word was speaking to me about my relationship, and we have already parted ways. But I'm not really sad about it, but I'm disappointed, and I'm confused. Please pray for my relationship. That was the part we talked about. If people don't make you a priority during their days, you're probably not the purpose in their life. Very important for relationships. And one more that I'm going to read um, from a beautiful young girl that has I have met personally once or twice. She says, I so loved last night's cleanse session. I thought I'd share this with you as this article was very familiar to me. And it's about soul detoxing for children. If anyone is interested in any material for your children, maybe you have a children's ministry or you're a good auntie or a fantastic grandmother or a mommy and a daddy. And you want to help your children detox their soul from things they've seen, things they've witnessed things they heard, things they should not have been involved in. Look, don't be ashamed. We can't tuck it under the rug. We found that out last night. What stays in the house really didn't stay in the house. It manifested in other ways. Drug addiction, prostitution, um, homelessness, mental illness, PTSD, ADD, ADHD. These are all traumas of things that hit our life during the most important years of our life. Hey, Yvonne Ramos, I can't get you in the church building, so I'll get you on the church TV. Glory to God. Marcia, Marcia, hey, what's going on, Marcia Shannon? I see you, Tammy Espada. Welcome, Delisa Ree. Oh, I know you. I met you in the airport. God bless you. So good to see y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, one of the hardest things that I had to hear and swallow was my son, when he became a man, tell me about some of the things he witnessed when I was, um, when he was a young man and when I was a young mother. I am not ashamed to say I was pregnant at 16 and had him at 17 and totally and completely immature and unready for motherhood. I could barely raise myself, never mind being responsible for another life. But I made it. I did it. I believe I did the best I can. And I believe that I did even better than the best that I can because I made sacrifices. And, you know, I made sure that I cooked meals. I didn't take him to fast food restaurants, mothers. I made sure that he went to school clean and dressed and on time. I couldn't do homework with him, but I took my little money that I was hustling up. We'll talk about that on another scope. And I got him tutors to help him through all the issues that he went through. But even in all of that, he witnessed some things in my life and my lifestyle choices that he should have never have witnessed. But thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. He actually got the nerve to come and talk to me about it. 
and he had um, witnessed some uh, escapades, if we'll call it that for tonight. He had even found a weapon that I thought I had hid in my house, and he found it. And he and another student was pr playing with it. Another friend of his from school were playing with it while I was at work. And I had no idea that they were playing with this gun and could have hurt themselves. Being a crazy woman at that time. And God blessed me with a beautiful child in my craziness. Isn't that amazing? Hello, Portland, Oregon. Nice and big and bright. I like that. God bless you. Thank you, Minister Brittany. So I just wanted to read these comments from some of the people who have taken the time to inbox me and thank me how it's impacting their lives, some of the questions that they had. And I, I want to start out tonight by just reminding us that we don't have to be ashamed of our past, but we do have to confront our past. Don't act like it didn't happen. Do not get upset when people have to tell us about ourselves. We weren't as uh, precious and perfect as we'd like to, to pretend that we were. But the worst thing is to go to your grave, not offering somebody the forgiveness that they need, forgiving yourself, walking into a new life. Hello, Linda. Hello, Michelle. Bless you. E7. I got Gigaby online, y'all. All right, Mishi. See, this is why this might work for a little while. Because I can't get these people in the church building, but I can get them on the online church. <laughs> I love it. And this last post I'm going to read. Thank you for posting these detoxes on Facebook. I found this by someone else posting it on their page. So there's a good time to go ahead and slide up, right, left, down, whatever you do with Apple and Android. I'm not a pro at this like some of these evangelists I see out here. Whatever you got to do to share it, share it. Because somebody has written in and let us know that they found me and this information on somebody else's page. And had they not shared it, she said she had been through many detoxes for her drug addiction. And now she heard this and she was on the bus coming from work and she started listening to the replay and realized that she had to stop and actually write things down. She hasn't had some information where she actually had to take notes because the information was so good. That's a that's a plus. That's a compliment. And I don't take it upon myself, but I take it upon our God. And she, then she had her to tell me, God bless me. And I receive it. You always make me want to go further. Isn't that beautiful? That's a wonderful thing to say. But she was sharing how she had gone through detox for drug addiction, um, but didn't realize that the problem really isn't the drug. The, the detox that she needs is in her soul, so she would no longer have to rely on the drug. Glory to God. Hi, Regina Ross. All right, so let me see. I wrote some notes today. I wrote them a little bit fancier. This is what we've been working with, <laughs> just to show you that I'm doing my homework. But tonight, I try to type it up a little better. Probably going to be better off with my own handwriting. Hello, Marissa Bennett. Hello, Caritha Thomas. Hello, Maria Cameron. Hello, Colleen from Florida. I told you I was going to still be your pastor in Florida. Didn't know how I was going to get there, but look, technology. You're very welcome, Linda. We love you. Glad you're on. Welcome, Faith Adams. And that's Ania. Okay, I'm trying to figure out that name. All right. Beautiful. So tonight, are y'all ready? We're going to talk tonight. Did you share with some good friends of yours just to make sure that they're listening? Don't do it for me. Do it for somebody else. If it's worth it. Hi, Carmen Sanford. If it's worth it to you, only if it's worth it to you, share it. If you think that this information can bless somebody and will bless somebody, share it with someone else. If not, don't worry about sharing. God has a way of getting his information out, getting his prophetic word out, getting his evangelist out. But if this information is good. I'm asking you to do as you are led and to share it so that someone else might could be blessed. We only have, what, 27 more days left. Welcome, Pastor Tammy Leonard, Lakeisha Bell. Hello, Melinda. Good, good, Santos. I like that name. Yes. If you're not from Connecticut, put your state up on the screen. Encourage us here who <clears throat> have stepped out to do something that we had no idea was going to go uh, to this level and accountability, but we're here. All right, so let's just start off from where we left off last night. The longer we view ourselves through a distorted lens, the more likely we are to believe a distorted truth. All right, L.A. Is that Louisiana or is that L.A. as in Los Angeles? All right, there's an Alexandria, and it's her first time on Periscope. Um, welcome. What's your first time on Periscope? I'm glad that I'm your first. Hallelujah. Denise Real McCoy Watson. Welcome, Priscilla Harris, Louisiana. All right. You know, I always wanted to go to Louisiana. I don't know what it is. I cannot figure it out to this day, but I have such a desire inside to go to Louisiana besides the food. I'd like to go there. Okay. Very interesting. I'm glad you're 25. Happy birthday. 
Um, the longer we lie to ourselves, deceive ourselves, or remain in denial about the truth, the more likely we are to base our decisions and actions on this falseness. <laughs> The longer we lie to ourselves, deceive ourselves, or remain in denial about the truth, the more likely we are to base our decisions and actions on this falseness. Hello, welcome, Nicole. Welcome, Taisha. Welcome, Reverend Trish. She says, present. We don't know. Listen, now this is so crazy. I had to say this a couple times last night, and it still was um, just perpetuating itself in me today. Say it with me. We don't know. What we don't know, we don't know about, ourselves. about ourselves. Now that's interesting. You have no idea what you don't know about yourself. How do you think, what's one way that you can actually, hey, Wendell Smith, what's one way do you think it's possible that you can actually find out something about yourself? Welcome, um, uh, a nig cack. <laughs> Welcome. Just wanted to give you a holler anyway. It's amazing. We don't know what we don't know about ourselves. And one way to find out about ourselves is through other people, relationships, family, the things that get on our nerve. I don't know what I don't know about myself. Absolutely, we don't. And one of the ways to find out is one of the ways that we don't like to, and it's through other people, it's through relationships. And guess what's most important about that? Most of the time, we don't even want to know about ourselves. It's going to hurt too much. I've been rejected enough. I always hear so many negative and critical things about myself. I don't need to hear anymore. But you can find someone in love, in kindness, that can talk to you and care enough about you to tell you about yourself so you can be a better you. Somebody say hashtag upgrade. We need to be a better us. And if I have to hear this truth, let it be from someone who, a matter of fact, I don't even have to love you, but it would be really good if you loved me. I would appreciate it if the person who's telling me about me, yeah. I knew really loved me. Yes. Welcome, Nisi. Absolutely. So let's just say I don't love you. I'm not a big fan of you. However, I know that you truly love me and I'm just not where you are. Mm -hmm. I can accept what you say to me because I know you're telling me it in love. I, I, I can see your love. Your love is represented in how you treat me, talk to me, how, how maybe loyal you are to just a phone call or checking up on me. Those things make a difference. Upgrade. Absolutely. Welcome, Michelle Jones. I see a few of y'all that, uh, Sean Lamont James. Oh, my babies are coming on tonight. Y'all trying to make me cry. Anita Marie Cotton. Susan Patrice Thomas, we don't like the source of our truth. And that's a good point. Thank you for saying that, Susan, because I had even um, posted on Twitter today, <clears throat> not to give a shout out to Twitter, but I had posted on Twitter, sometimes it's not what you say. Sometimes it's not even how you say it. Sometimes it's who's saying it. Doesn't that make a big difference? You could have two people tell you the same thing, but one person said it nice and the other person said it nicer, but you still don't receive it because of who they are or who they are not in your life. So you have to find someone who can get a message across to you in any tone, in any dynamic of the relationship, but you trust them to tell you the truth because you don't know what you don't know about yourself. So find someone who can. And it doesn't have, it's better, it's best not to be someone you hang with every day because familiarity does breed content. Find someone who you check in with once in a while. Maybe like someone you can call a mother or an auntie or a big sis and trust them for what they say about you. Upgrade, absolutely. Hello, John Booker, welcome to you too. Amen. So let's move on a little further. I do wanna reach a certain destination tonight. And I want you to know that as I was writing this, the Lord really, really impressed on my heart. And we're not going to, you know, offend those who are on here. Because I found out we do have a couple of listeners who have no faith and, and maybe even no belief in God or Jesus Christ. And I respect that. That is your choice. And I respect it. So I don't want to make this a place where we're preaching Jesus. But I want to uh, make this a place where the culture of the kingdom is available to you. And you can see that there is a better way and a better life, whether you choose him or not. I want you to take this teaching and work it to the best of your ability. So welcome even to you. And I believe that this information has been put into our hands because God loves us so much. Even if we don't love him, even if we don't know in him, even if we don't believe in him, I spent more years not believing than I have in believing. So I understand and I can understand where you are. 
But I believe that this information, the timing of these posts, Periscope, we're on live, Facebook Live, we're up here now with you now. This is being done on purpose and intentional. This was an assignment that God had set up for your life that was once in the future that he had scheduled for you to be on. He, this was no surprise or any shock to him. Hello, Clarice. God bless you. I love you too. Denise Real McCoy. Absolutely. Because we don't like the person giving the information. Exactly my point. Pastor Sandra, welcome. That is exactly my point. I'm going to say it again for those that just got on, even though I know you're probably going to replay it. Sometimes it's not what you say. Sometimes it's not even how you say it. It's just that you're saying it. I need somebody else to say this to me so that I can receive them. And that's, we got to be honest about that. I like what you're saying, but I just can't receive this from you. You know, we talked last night that why does everybody have to have gone through the same problem as you in order to minister to you? That's a mind thing, and it's not the truth. It's not the truth, but it's a comfort level. It's a, it's a, it's a comfortability thing that we've gotten used to, that if you haven't gone through what I have gone through, you can't tell me nothing about it, but that's not true because there's many teachers. There are many physicians. There's lawyers who represent your case that have never been arrested for for what you've been arrested for, but yet they get you off that case. You want someone who's studied, who's practiced, who's matriculated. You want someone who has, um, you know, that's all physicians do is practice. You want someone who's practiced this thing that can help you get out of it. But you would hopefully like it to be someone of integrity, someone that you can trust, that you can rely on, somebody that can keep your confidence so that you can be the better you. Upgrade, upgrade. Who is your person of influence? Exactly. Hello. Am I saying your name right, Chelsea? I love the way you spell it. Beautiful. So come on, let's go on a little bit further. I do believe that this information is being put in our hands for a reason and for a timing and can change the remaining of our 2017. I believe that this is the time now to ask for help. Help in showing you anything in your life that is polluting the plan for your life including your shortcomings, your defenses, and everything that may be placed around you to set you up for a sabotage. I know a few people who self-sabotage their own life. They don't need any help. They don't need any reinforcements. They take three steps forward and they themselves sabotage their life. And they don't go three steps back. They don't go five steps back. Thirteen steps back. S sabotaging themselves. Fear of failure. Fear of success. Some people just have fear. We even talked about that last night. These are great things for us to research our soul because I'm here to help you, but the real work you've got to do on your own. Are you willing to do it? Welcome, Corindus, one of my girls now. Hello, Apostle Nona. I love you, sis, as well. Things that are polluting you. Now is the time to take a good look at it. Journal yourself. It's dark early in our part of the state. In, in January for the winter is cold. Most of us aren't going anywhere. You have no reason. Everyone else, take this journey. 30 days. What's 30 days out of, out of how many days we have in a year? 500 and what? 300, 360 days? 300, thank you. I did it backwards. 365 days. I was about to say 563. 365 days we have in a year. And you can't take 30 out for yourself. But you go to the gym. You go to Sephora. You go to Mac. You go to the restaurants, 30 days, 30 days. You're worth it. You're worth it. 30 days. Hey, Mr. Howard. They're telling me 365, Apostle, 365. <laughs> Why can't we see our self-generated toxins? Why can't we see it? We got eyes. We wear glasses. How come we can't see our own self-generated toxins? You know why? Because some of us flatter ourselves too much to see the truth. See how I got in your face right there? Some of us flatter ourselves too much to see the truth. Sometimes we overdress it physically, mentally, emotionally. We flatter ourselves. And, and it's good to have a good, healthy self-esteem. I'm all in for that. But at the same time, in the privacy of your own space and time, you really need to have a time where you're not flattering yourself and you're like, look, the way you acted today was embarrassing, and we need to have a conversation about this. You need to talk to yourself, especially if you don't have anyone else yet that you talk to. You need to have a conversation with yourself. Don't always let it have to be people that sees your worst behaviors and have to correct you. Monitor yourself. For the believers, that is one of the uh, functions of the Holy Ghost. Conviction. Hello? Are my people there tonight? Are y'all sleeping on me? 
Some of us, we just flatter ourselves too much. They lie to themselves and they don't even know it. And they become so skilled at self-deception that they cannot detect or confess their own issues. Self-check. Some of us lie so much to ourselves, if not verbally, with those silent thoughts we talked about last night, that we don't even know it. And we've become so skilled at self-deception that we cannot detect or confess our own faults. Plainly stated, y'all ready? Y'all know I'm going to go ahead and just drop it on you. Put another dumbbell on you, 10 pounds. Come on, y'all ready? Get your muscle ready. 10 pounds. Plainly stated, we manufacture our own poison and administer it to ourselves in regular doses every day. Mm. We manufacture. We ain't got to go to China. Nope, this, thing, this, don't, this don't come from Hong Kong. <laughs> this coming straight from you. Self-manufactured our own poison and administer it in regular doses to ourselves daily. Wow. Wake up. Wake up. Wake me up. Wake me up. If you are a friend of mine, wake me up. If you are a loved one of mine, wake me up. If you see purpose in my life, wake me up. Come on, I want to see it on the screen. Somebody wake me up. Somebody who loves me, wake me up. Somebody who's willing to invest in me through a phone call, through accountability, through responsibility, through loyalty, who won't embarrass me and expose me. Help wake me up. I don't want to administer this poison to myself, manufacture it, administer it to myself on a daily basis. I've been uh, healthy most of my life. I don't have to uh, shoot insulin in me. I don't have to take high blood pressure pills, cholesterol pills. I don't have to take anything from my physical body, but yet every day I manufacture a poison that I administer to myself every day. Now, if I was in a church, I would say the devil is a liar. But since I'm not, I'm going to say we is a liar. And we need to go ahead and stop it and get this stuff together. Plainly stated, we manufacture, say it with me, our own poison. And administer it on a regular basis to ourselves. If we never identify these lies and replace them with truth, we'll forever crave a healthy life on a diet of poison and always wonder why we are sick. Now, that's amazing. I had studied um, habits before, in particular bad habits. I have a teaching on it out there. I think it's on YouTube or, or Life Care or whatever, one of those online classes that we do and um very good ebony and um i have this thing out there on bad habits and one of the keys that i found out in your um your deliverance or your change from a bad habit you can never just drop i'm not going to say never i'm not going to say that because there's always a supernatural it is harder to drop a bad habit and replace it with nothing when you can simply replace it with a good habit Anything that has become a habit in your life and you are struggling with because it's not one that you want to keep, it's not waking up at a certain time for prayer, or it's not eating healthy, or working out, or monitoring your thoughts. And whenever you have a bad habit, the best way to get out of it quicker is to replace it with something else, preferably something good. Isn't that amazing? That's right, Susan. We manufacture our own poison. Upgrade. Welcome, Pastor Carrie. Help me get this poison out. I'm with you, Pastor Sandra. Yes, Minister Leah. Amen, Janita. Amen. So y'all hearing me pretty well tonight. I heard last night I was talking so fast and I was turning so red and they felt I was preaching so hard they couldn't keep up with me. So a lot of people said, thank God for replay. So thank God for replay. So if we never identify the lies and replace them with truth, we'll forever crave a healthy life on a diet of poison. And always wonder why we're sick, mind sickness, part of our soul. So how do we begin? Identifying ourself. That's what we got to do. How do we begin? We got to start identifying ourselves. The self-told lies. Say that with me. I have to start identifying myself. I have to start identifying myself. And someone go up on the screen, welcome Mike Tate. Someone go up on the screen and say self-told lies. That's how we begin, identifying. I told myself these lies. Do you know how most people are sick with anorexia? They see something totally different when they look in the mirror than anyone else does. 
And you know why they see it? Because they told themselves that lie so much, the eyes begin to see what the mind had manufactured. It's a manufactured poison that they told themselves day after day, maybe hour after hour. So now when they look in the mirror and the physician is there and maybe mommy and daddy or the husband is there and they're looking in the mirror and they're saying, I'm telling you, you're not fat, skin and bones, but I, I look fat, I look fat. The mind has manufactured now and produced to the eyes a vision of what you believe that you manufactured. Come on, this is good stuff now. Give me some hearts if you agree. We're going to get free. 30 days and we lifting what? About 20 pounds. We up to 20 pounds about now. So I'd encourage you to go through an eternal self-examination. This is what it's going to take. Self-told lies. Keep me from lying to myself. Help us, help us, help us. Absolutely. Take an honest look with your self-examination on the way you live, how you think, and who or what influences you the most. And you're going to have to work hard at this because this is about you and you owe this to yourself. You work hard on your job. You keep your house clean or you exercise really well or you make sure that you, you eat a healthy lifestyle and all that's good and we, we, we really like that. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. We like all that. But this now has to be about you. Come on, somebody say, I'm about to make it about me. Come on, I'm speaking in the bonics, but just type it. I'm about to make it about me. Yes. Tell the family, I just need 30 days. You got 27 now. I just need 30 days. Just give me 30 days for me. 30 days. I need this time. Put them to bed. That's why we come on 9 o'clock at night. Put them to bed. It's time to be about me. It's about me. I, you, you tell that next relationship that's waiting at the gate, ready for you to get on board and take off with it. You tell that next relationship, it's not you. It's me. I need 30 days just to discover me. And I don't know how long the work is going to take after that. I cannot get involved in relationship with you because it's time for me to make this about me. Isn't that amazing? I need a plug for one of these gadgets here, please. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right, let's go on. It's through self-examination, and it's first by identifying your self-told lies and replacing them with the truth. Do not just stop something. You've got to take on the truth of it. You have to take on the truth of it. Bear with me. I got to charge up. There we go. You may have to bring something closer. Thank you. I think I need a new phone. Seriously, I charged it up before this and it's dying on me. I got a chance to post up some things here. Let's see. I'm about to make it about me. Christina Atkins, that's right, sweetheart. It's not you, it's me. She said she felt that and she felt like running. Well, you know what? I took a moment to recharge my phone, so why don't you take a moment to run? You just go on and run. We'll be right here when you come back. <laughs> come on, Priscilla Harris. Come on, Linda. Come on, Trish. Come on, Cherie. Come on, Delisa, Kareem, Mike Take, taking the mask off. And it's all right because guess what? You're in the privacy of whatever privacy you're in. Nobody's got to deal with it. I see Crystal Schmidt, emph emphatic about Jesus. I've seen you up here before. Bless you. Hey, I see Devin Stoner, Olivia, Vanessa Thomas, Rachel, Cynthia Bazden. It says two more viewers that are not shown on this list, but I want to make sure I give you all a shout out. Inbox me. I'll read your comments. We'll answer your questions, and I'll read your encouragement that you've shared. It's good stuff. Yes, Beverly. It's about you. It's about you, Anya. It's time. 30 days. Let's do it. Let's just do it. So we're going to start by identifying self-told lies, but we have to replace them. Come on, let me see it come up on the board. We begin by identifying self-told lies. This isn't even about the childhood. We dealt with the childhood last night. So now those lies have been told to us. They're exposed. Now we're journaling to find out what is it that we're doing in our adult life that we don't need to be doing that came from our childhood. Tonight, what we're dealing with, tonight we're dealing with the lies that we tell ourselves now, whether it's a, a repeat or repetition of our childhood lies or new lies that we've told ourselves. We're making our own lying traditions. And it's the truth. It's the truth. But thank God who causes us to triumph for exposing this and to make us healthy again. 
someone even asked me, um, you know, once you go through this, what do you what do you recommend after that? I recommend making it one of your traditions that we all make for the new year. Start your year out every year. I like to end my year doing this. So check myself so for the beginning of the year, I can be on a better path. Yes, Jermaine, let's go. Corindus, come on. Absolutely. Minister Leah, Pastor Sandra. Hey, Carlin. It is. It is. Elaine Stringer, come on. You've been with me, girl. Pump the weights. Pump the weights. Y'all sweating a little bit now, but it's all right. Come on. Pump them weights with your cute little sweatsuits on and our nightcaps. <laughs> That's what we call it, right? Nightcaps at nine. Mm -hmm. And anybody think a nightcap is a drink, see? Because y'all watch TV. But when you look up, there is actually a nightcap that you wear to bed at night. Yes. So we putting on our nightcaps at nine. And we going to have um, Mima read us a story about how to get our soul to bed together in 30 days in the month of January. Just call me Mima. We'll be all right. So I encourage you to do an internal self-examination. Take an honest look at the way you live, how you think, and who or what influences you the most. <laughs> okay, Ebony. And work hard to be brutally honest. Work hard to be brutally honest. Be honest with yourself. I beseech you, brothers and sisters, friends, beautiful people. Be honest with yourself. It is that moment. Thank you, Marissa. Examine your life for toxic behaviors. And, and you know, once you run your list down of what you consider toxic... We're going back to the beginning of this, this recording tonight and find out who is it that you can trust to tell me about my toxic behaviors. Look within for toxic emotions. Any deep feelings that lead you away from your purpose and if you are a believer, your relationship with God. Look for any deep feelings that lead you away from purpose. Very good, Rabbi Wayne. You're exactly right. We shouldn't be too hard. And then the other end of that spectrum is we shouldn't be too easy. Absolutely. It's time for us to dig deep. Somebody said the other day, I just need to be gutted out. Yes, yeah, Sister Lydia, nice to see you on. Who can you trust? That may be some homework study. Absolutely. So look within for toxic emotions, any deep feelings that lead you away from, from, from your purpose or God's truth. Take an honest look at any unhealthy consumptions. The media you consume, the sites you surf, the people you spend the most time around. The first step, y'all ready for me? I wrote this in bold. So that means I wanted to make sure it was emphasized. The first step to defeating an enemy is to recognize your opponent. To the root, that's right. The first step to defeating any enemy is to recognize your opponent. They're already an opponent. You just have to figure out which one of your opponents is your enemy. Remember, for those who know the word of God, um, Judas had communion with Jesus. So your enemies, they're right there. So that's cute, right? But guess what? That's not what this is about. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. Listen to the next line. Though your enemy might be invisible. I got a little live audience tonight. I'll show you all their faces in the end. And um, they're here writing and scratching down. And they're trying to take notes. And it's, it's getting a little excited in here. And I wouldn't even mind... Um, if at the end of these 30 days, anyone has an amazing testimony to share or uh, anything they'd like to share with me to come on live with me at the end. And let's talk to the audience and make this thing real. This was real. This was real for my life. There's people that are on here and they're really trusting and believing and dedicating themselves to 30 days of making this change in their life. Some people are sick and tired of sick and tired. So we're on here together. I'm going to repeat this last line again. Uh, husband, please make sure you're not texting and driving now. The first step to defeating an enemy is to recognize your opponent. Part two, though your opponent might be invisible. And that's where we are now. We're dealing with the soul. So we are dealing with the invisible opponent. So let me warn you, the closer you get to uncovering your toxic killer that's in your life, the harder 
Your enemy will fight to keep the grip on you. The enemy of your mind, the enemy of your, your thoughts, start all in your mind, the enemy of your hearts, all with your mind. You want me to read it again? The closer you get to uncovering a toxic killer in your life, the harder this enemy will fight to keep you. Did you ever go on a fast and you never really cared too much for, um, let's say, codfish? It wasn't one of your favorites? But go on a fast and see if you won't crave some codfish. If you don't start having a taste for it. You go out somewhere. Now, I just wouldn't mind having a little piece of that. You never even liked it before. Welcome, Alfonso 1423. You never even liked it before. All of a sudden now. So what is that? It's an invisible enemy. That's a craving in particular. Wow. But now, the closer you get to uncovering the toxic killer in your life, the harder the enemy will fight to keep its grip. You're going to crave it. You're going to desire it. You're going to defend it. You're going to make excuses. Remember last night, one of the excuses was, um, who wants to tell me what one of the excuses was? One of the word statements, the sentences that we have to watch out for to prove that we're protecting something in our life. I've always been like that. That's a defense mechanism. That's a soldier that you got outside your heart that's not letting you deal with the heart issues, and he's got to go. So if you're like me or many other people that have had to go through soul detox before, you might even unknowingly betray yourself and fight against your own change. Wish I had a mic to drop. Wow. <laughs> We're going to get me a mic to drop. I don't need a mic. I can't hold nothing else. The closer you get to uncovering a toxic killer in your life, the harder this enemy, even if he's invisible, will try to keep his grip on you. And if you're like most of us, you might evenly, unknowingly betray yourself and fight against your own change. Come on. Wow. Ebony dropped the mic. Thank you. I see somebody else. I think Beverly Hammer did too. Yes, I like that, Rabbi Wayne. Yes, Master Teacher. Isn't that amazing? Self-sabotage. When you unknowingly betray yourself and fight against your own change. Denial is often our first line of defense. Isn't that amazing? Our first line of defense is to deny. And then that little soldier comes up and says, I've always been like this. I've got control of this. This is not a problem. It's not like this all the time. We start going ahead of ourselves, defending and protecting and going against our own change. Wow. We are skilled at taking responsibility for little, but justifying much. Yes, Nicola, Trish, Cherie, defense mechanism, unhealthy ones, absolutely. Our own worst enemy. We can be, but we're working against that now. We're going to work with ourselves. Pride. Amen. Somebody else shouted out Jesus. That's all right, too. Listen, I need you to take some more notes. You ready? Those who are the most defensive are often the most unknowingly guilty. Wow. Those who are most defensive are often the most unknowingly guilty. Guilty. Guilty all the same. Unknowingly, okay, but still guilty. The most offensive people in your life. Think about yourself. Think about others if you need to for a moment. But the ones who are most offensive, they are the ones that's guilty unknowingly. It's been said that the more convinced you are that you are right, the more likely you are wrong. If you fight back against those trying to help you, chances are you are fighting to keep your own lies intact. If someone who loves you try to show you a dangerous pattern in your life, you might be 100% convinced they are wrong when the truth is there and they are 100% correct. Yes, absolutely, Twin Shears. Absolutely. Come on, Beverly. Come on, Priscilla. Yes, Cheryl Johnson. I've been waiting for you. You're going to need replay. I'll read it again. You might unknowingly betray yourself and fight against your own change. Denial is our first defense, and we are skilled people at taking responsibility for a little bit and justifying much. Come on, watch it now. Not today, mister. Maybe tomorrow. Though you are most offensive... 
Those who are most offensive are often the most guilty ones unknowingly. If you fight back against those trying to help you, chances are you are fighting to keep your own lies intact. Think of that the next time somebody confronts you. When, when you just can't listen. Let me, uh, let me just listen. Sometimes you have to be honest and say, I don't really agree with you, but I'm going to listen. I'm going to take it into consideration. At least do that. Because as soon as you start defending and protecting, it's like the alarms go off. And, you know, after this point, the alarms are going to go off. The internal alarms are going to tell you, what was the teaching you received? Bump, 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 bump. Oh, there's something going on. That means I'm protecting something. So let me write it down because I don't have time right now, but I need to write it down and go and do an evaluation on myself and find out why am I protecting this thing? Why can't I hear them? Why is it hard for me to receive this? Even Peter in the New Testament is a perfect example. When Jesus explained some of the disciples would fall away and deny him, Peter was convinced that he never would. With unshakable confidence, Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. As he flattered himself, remember we talked about that earlier, Peter was unaware of his toxic self-deception. In the very next verse, we find Jesus explaining that before the rooster crows, Peter would deny Jesus three times. But Peter stood his ground and declared, even if I have to die with you, I would never disown you. Have you heard that story before? If someone has been trying to show you something about yourself and you continue to fight it, Maybe it's time to acknowledge that you might be deceived. Mm -hmm. wow. We talked last night about some people don't even need a drink of alcohol. You don't even need a drug. You haven't been sober in years because you have been flattering yourself for so long that you are intoxicated on your own supply of pride, of arrogance, of denial, your invisible enemy. Who's causing you now to fight against your own good change. Your spouse might be convinced you have a problem with painkillers. Crystals um, or another drug. But you stand your ground and say, I've got control over this. I don't have a problem with this. You always overreacting. You always nagging me. There was a voice that started to state something to you. At least you could do if you love the person or they have any quality in your life. Is to hear what they're saying and reason with it. It's the least you could do. Someone might have told you that you're addicted to video games or social media, but you don't believe it. Maybe several loved ones have told you that you're a workaholic, but you, you won't even stop working to listen to them. Help me, Jesus. I've been through that one. And that's a mighty, mighty giant in your life. Even while they're trying to talk to you and tell you you're a workaholic. You're working or they're trying to tell you that you, you're, you're eating too much unhealthy stuff and you stuff in your mouth while they're, while they're talking to you. If you find yourself resisting or fighting back, be careful. These are triggers for you to pay attention to. Those who are most convinced are often the most deceived. Those who are, if you are most convinced, I've got control of this. You know that's denial when you go to any kind of group. It's denial. Those who are most convinced are often most deceived. Be careful not to flatter yourself so much that you cannot detect or hate the things that are against you, even when they are invisible. Thank you. Thank you. We're coming against that unseen enemy. Come on, it's not always someone else. The unseen enemy. Okay, making sure we all still up. Absolutely. And, you know, as we're, we're talking together over these next few nights, different people are going to come up in our mind, and that's okay. Um, that does happen. But make sure you come up in your mind somewhere, too, over these next 30 days because this is about a better you. This is about an upgrade for you. Remember, what you ignore today will affect your tomorrows. We talked about that. For the first three days at least. It's easy to deceive ourselves. It's easy to deceive ourselves. We need outside help to become more objective. And especially to see those blind spots that we talked about last night. And if our shields are up and our defenses are operating at 
may not be hearing those around us and what they are saying to us. Sometimes, if we really want to change, we must ask, show us what's true about how we're thinking, talking and living. Very good, Ebony. We introduced, we opened up on those smoke screens. Things that were normal to us that we find out are not so normal. We've been in this all the time. Bleeding out. My God, sir. Latanya Rush. God bless you. Welcome. And since we can't change what we can't identify, we should ask God, our higher power, or whatever you believe in. I can take you through what I believe in. And we can walk through that together. But for the lesson on tonight, I want you to learn about the invisible enemy of your mind. Who's, who's creeping? Who's talking to you? And ask God to show you any areas of your life that may be harmful to you, offensive to the people around you, or displeasing to God himself. God speaks to us in many ways. Even if you don't believe, it's all right. Don't be offended. He speaks through his word. He speaks through circumstances. He speaks through his spirit. And he speaks through people. If you, if you seek God and listen carefully to what he might say to you through people around you, you might find this answer from Proverbs 15, 31 through 32. He who listens to life-giving rebuke will be at home amongst the wise. He who ignores discipline despises himself. But whoever heeds correction gains understanding. Isn't that interesting? And the phrase life-giving rebuke is very interesting. Occasionally, someone will show communication, an important message through a life-giving rebuke. It's important to note that not all rebukes are life-giving, but you do want people in your life that can give you a strong life-giving rebuke. Say that. Come on. Life-giving rebuke. Absolutely. Come on. Let me see it on the screen. I know some of y'all might be trying to take notes, but you want somebody in your life that can give me a life-giving rebuke. Don't just rebuke me. Don't rebuke me unto death. Give me life-giving rebuke. After this correction, after this rebuke, give me direction to how I move forward from here. I don't want to be rebuked and stuck and rebuked and die or re rebuked and bitter and rebuked and can't show up no more, rebuked and afraid to talk to you. Give me a life-giving rebuke. Give me a life-giving correction. Correct me so that I can get life after this. Life-giving rebuke. Very important from Proverbs 15, 31 through 32. Listen to what you're if more than one person has told you that you have a problem with something, chances are pretty good. Say it with me. You have a problem with something. <laughs> if all your close friends worry about you because you overspend each month, you likely have a problem with overspending. And these are things that are worth taking into consideration about. It's going to hurt. No one likes to hear things about themselves. But again, it's sometime, it's not what someone says. It's not even how they say it, but it's the person who says it to you. Find someone who can give you a life-given rebuke. Save my life. There's a, there's a statement that says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do what it says. Don't just listen to what people says. Do what it says. Save your own life. If you are concern, concerned, if you are consumed with worry, it's time to do something about that. You know how many people I meet that are consumed with worry and I, yet I hear them say, my mother was like that or my father was like that and I remember my grandmother was like that and, you know, grandma was a heavy drinker. I found out she was a heavy drinker because she was concerned with, well, I don't want to be like them. But slowly and surely, we find out you end up being like them. Life-giving rebuke is what I'm giving you tonight. Come on, lift them 20 pounds up. 20-pound dumbbells. Come on, let's go. Life-giving rebuke. You don't have to be like your family line. You can take the good out of your family name and leave the bad. You don't have to become what you have been raised under. You don't have to be like what was your first 
role models in your life. You do not have to be the bad part of the product of your bad environment. I bind that. You do not have to be a part of that. Looks like Facebook Live might be dragging. Everybody all right out there? It's fine. to be the bad part of the product of your environment. We don't have to smoke because our parents smoke. We don't have to be drinkers because our parents were drinkers. We don't have to end up in divorce because all the women in our family get a divorce. We stop that tonight because we're coming against your silent enemy, your silent thoughts, your invisible enemy. We're coming against that tonight. And you thought your enemy was somebody else. No, that enemy is inside of you. You have this power. That's absolutely, Alfonso. Break the cycle. Welcome, Sam Mabry. Welcome. Come on, somebody put up there with me. Detox. Mm -hmm. Detox. Come on, let's hit detox. this board up tonight. Detox. detox. Let's put it up there. We're going to detox. The drugs wasn't my problem. It was my soul. My mouth wasn't even my problem. It was my soul. It wasn't even my ex. It was my soul. I didn't have a problem on that job because everybody was picking on me. It was my soul. It's not that I'm late all the time because I always got things going on. It's something in my soul. I don't always have a sickness because I'm just an unhealthy person. Person, It is something in your soul. And we're going to snatch that invisible enemy out where you're going to be healthy. You're going to love well. You're going to have lasting relationships. You're going to have strong friendships. You're going to have an amazing job or an amazing career because we're going to deal with your soul. And you're going to lift them weights. And we're going to deal with this. Nobody's going to lift your weight for you. Your kids are no longer going to carry your burden. Your spouse isn't carrying your burden. Your mom and your daddy not carrying you. You are going to carry your own weight. And in 27 days, we're going to lose some of the stuff that's invisible that keeps coming up and threatening us. We have an appointment somewhere down the road, and I need you to make it. And I need you to make it there healthy. I need you to make it there on time. And I need you not to lose your assignment, your engagement, because of this invisible enemy that keeps causing you to sabotage the good change that needs to happen in your life. If you're with me tonight, I need you to do it again and say detox. detox. Yes. Detox. Yes. Detox. detox. Got to carry my own weight. I can't give it to anybody else anymore. Thank you, Jesus. We're almost done. Are y'all doing all right tonight? Yes. You can't change what you don't see. Mm -hmm. You cannot change what you don't see. You have to call it what it is. Somebody has a problem with lying on here tonight. You lie for no reason. You lie to live up to your own expectations. Nobody even needs you to live up to the expectation that you set for yourself. And you don't lie because you are just a manipulative liar. You lie because you have believed an enemy that has sold these thoughts in your mind. You have believed the hype that you have to be a certain way to feel good about yourself. You're going to be delivered from the lying because it started in your soul. You cannot change what you do not see. It's time to see the truth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start wrapping it up about here. Why do we so quickly deceive ourselves? Come on, Shannon. Come on, Trish. Yes, Corinda. I'm with you. Andrea Allen. Absolutely. Come on, Maria. Minister Brittany, Minister Leah, come on. Delisa, absolutely. Denise, come on, detox. Come on, lift those weights, Chevelle. Why is it that we are so quick to deceive ourselves? The answer is actually simple, and it's life transforming. Tell me when you're ready for it. Ready. Ready. <laughs> We deceive ourselves because we are afraid of the truth. Mm -hmm. We deceive ourselves because we are afraid of the truth. The very thing we fear is what we need the most. Come on, drop the mic. <laughs> drop the mic. Come on, y'all. Let me see the drop mics up here again. Absolutely. Drop the mics. 
we deceive ourselves because we are afraid of the truth. The very truth we fear is what we need the most. But we've been so hurt, so rejected, so abandoned, so misunderstood, so gossiped about, so lied about. We felt like we failed so many things in life. We couldn't get through school. We didn't satisfy our parents. We weren't good enough to hang with certain groups. We couldn't hang with certain cliques. We've had so much of that we just cannot take anymore. So I'd rather you not give me the truth, but just accept me the way I am. Mm -mm. No, 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 no more. Invisible enemy, you've got to go. So the very thing you fear is what you need the most. So overnight tonight and tomorrow, your breakfast, your lunch hour, I want you to begin to write down for me as we get ready to close out this session for tonight. I want you to begin to write down for me what are some of the things you fear. And I know from having these conversations this week, rejection is a major fear that we have. People do things so that they will not be rejected. But most people who fear rejection end up rejecting more people in their life than people have actually rejected them. You actually become the rejector, just like the abusee becomes the abuser. Come on. Because when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Tonight, I want to encourage you, one, to stop lying to yourself. Two, I want you to stop looking through a distorted lens. And thirdly, I want you to start fighting against this enemy of your soul, the one that's invisible. And I want you to stop fighting against the change and receive the change. Come on, talk to me on the screen. We're getting ready to shut down. I don't want to overburden. I want us to get this really in our soul. And I want to hear testimonies. Stop fighting against the change. Stop lying to yourself. Start with you. The very thing you fear is the very thing you need. Yes, Apostle. Yes, Sean. Yes, Rosa. That rejection. We'll do something on rejection maybe by February. Time to change. Stop lying to yourself. Receive the change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Receive the change. You know, one thing they tell you when you go in and you talk to psychiatrists and psychologists that um, you got to be honest. If you're not honest with your issues, how can anybody help you? You're not going in there to look perfect. Look, I need to come. People come to my office and say, look, I, this needs to be the place of confidentiality because I'm going to tell you some stuff that I've never told anybody else on this earth. And then I need help with it. And, and the, the whole purpose of the visit is not to get the 2 one one on somebody's scoop, but how can I give you a life-giving rebuke that would set you on your way to purpose? There's an author inside of you. There's a movie producer inside of you. There's a writer inside of you. There is a great mom. There's a great wife in front of, inside of you. There's a great husband inside of you. You are an awesome man of God. You are an excellent son. And maybe someone never told you and never encouraged you in the things of life. But for every bad habit, for every lie that was spoken to you, or for the way we say it in the churches, there was a word curse spoken over to you. I speak life to you. I release liberty to you. I call on the powers of God through his mighty Holy Spirit. And I send you life-giving change on tonight. You shall live and not die, but you also shall live more abundantly. We're working on abundant life over the next 27 days. Come on, Kareem. Come on, Andrea. Let's go. Some of your names, I, I want to call you out, but I don't see the names. Allie Can, come on. Beverly Ann, Denise, come on. Next week, um, next week, <laughs> tomorrow, we're going to be dealing with septic thoughts. Overcoming our false beliefs. Not just the things that we think. Now so many things are belief. There's a difference between a thought and a belief. Belief, we create systems. Thoughts create beliefs. We're going to deal with septic thoughts. Overcoming false beliefs. How are we doing tonight? Are we all right? You doing okay? Yeah. Are you still with me? Everybody still loving on me? We still loving on each other here? We're going to get through this. We're going to triumph over this. This was your destiny that was set up a long time ago for you. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to sew anywhere. You don't have to leave anywhere. You don't have to do anything but turn on your phones or your computers at 9 o'clock for the rest of this month. And I'm going to give you seeds, and you are going to make sure that these seeds bring back a harvest in your life because you're going to do the work of changing the pattern. You're going to change the pattern. 
I'll look for your inboxes. I'll look for your thoughts. We're going to go forth and do great things together. We're not going to be ashamed. We're going to come out of this thing. And before you know something becomes very pretty, it has to go through a messy part. So we're going to go through that, but we're going to be all right. Needed this tonight. Thank you. That's what I need to know. I don't want to get up here and waste anybody's time, especially my own. So I pray that this is what you need, that I can sow something into your life that's going to make you a, a, a better person, um, a better believer, a better mom, a better sister, a better wife, a husband, whatever it is in your life that you want to upgrade in all the way around. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for the thank yous. He's feeling marvelous. But somebody say, I'm bleeding out, but I'm good. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yes, detox. We're going to detox. Well, my detox delegates, it's about that time again to go. I want to keep it as brief as possible, but this is such a heavy thing that we're doing. And I just want to remind you that we're on each night um, this month, including weekends at 9 o'clock. If you have to miss it, thank, thank God for technology. There's the replay. Take your notes. Work this thing. Work it hard. Teaching to the core. Yes. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. I need to hear this. Thank you so much. Cut me so I can grow. Yeah, that's something we say in the house. What you don't know will hurt you. It's time to get to know the you that you don't know. An unhealthy thoughts lead to unhealthy words. But silent thoughts poison your soul. Well, it's about that time to go. First timer, welcome. What state are you from, Angie Loving God? Welcome. Welcome back, Edward Estelle. Yes, Sister Gilda. Upgrade. Upgrade. Beautiful. Well, I hope you all can tune in tomorrow, and I, I'm not even going to hope. I know you all are going to tune in tomorrow, if not live, but by replay. But I hope it's live because I like the conversation. Kansas, Kansas, very good. Welcome. Excited for you. Um... I'm a diamond, and I have to have the dirt removed in order to shine. Exactly. There is a process for that. What I don't know will hurt me. Same time, same channel. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad to know you needed this. Thank you. Well, let me just pray. If um, you're not a believer, you're not interested in prayer, you can uh, disconnect. It's not a problem. But I would hope that you would stay on and just receive it as an affirmation over your life. Father, we thank you for each person that has taken the time first to even tune in tonight. We thank you for the zeal and the passion to come on for this third night. And we already see their 30 days, and they look much better in their future than they look right now. We thank you because we wholeheartedly lay ourselves down before you, and we ask for you to do the open heart surgery on us, deal with our soul, deal with our childhood uh, patterns that have been set in our life, even the self-told lies. Help us to fight this unseen enemy, and help us most of all not to take sides with our enemy but to embrace the change that is coming our way we come against fear we come against doubt we come against procrastination negativity we come against the things that come against the purpose in my life I thank you for this teaching and I thank you for this time be covered be anointed and most of all take some time to love somebody sold to somebody what you need sold in your life that's the way it works. We reap what we sow. Sow something good tomorrow. Have a great conversation with, with someone tomorrow. Share about this detox. Share a line. Make it a cliche. People who don't know too much d depth of the word love cliches, give them a cliche. Provoke their curiosity. You are now a detox delegate. You're going to be graduating in 30 days. And you're going to have your clean and sober license. And you're going to have to do this and take charge with people in your neighborhood, in your home, in your families, in your workplace. Sit with somebody in a cafeteria. You are a detox delegate, and after these 30 days, I expect you to be the stronger to go and to strengthen your brothers and your sisters. Well, I love you. If you love me, tell me you love me back. I see the heart, so I, I receive the love. It's a good thing to be loved, and it's good to know that I can even share this going live with something I just expected to deal with a few people that would have gotten on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Good night. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock. As they said, be here or be square. Good night.